Hey, what's up, ladies and gents? Iggy here with Faltech Unlimited. I'm doing a FN509 Tactical with Olight Balder Mini. Um, yeah, so this should uh, should be a fun build. It's going out to a uh, Mr. Jason Jenkins. I saw him on uh, YouTube, or he found me on YouTube, so we're going to be uh, building his uh, one of his many holsters. I've already done all of them. This is the last one. So uh, we are going to get this done because I want the sore out. So we are using the push down hoods that you saw in another video. You push and rotate. So we'll be using that hood and RTI plate. So this is going to be a uh, G-code style with obviously a uh, RTI plate. It's number 34. And it is going to be multicam so sadly this is literally the only multicam i can get just it's it's absolutely horrendous trying to find prints right now some people are going out of business some people uh, don't particularly do this one but um i now have a sublimation printer so uh, i just got the um ink in i just got the uh what the heck's it called continuous ink for it it's a it's a container that sits outside so i got that and uh i got some paper so technically right now i'm all set up so I'm going to try and do something later on, maybe today, maybe tomorrow. I don't know, but uh, we're going to do something. But until then, let's build a taco style for the FN 509 Tactical with the Olight Balder Mini. Oh, Yawning for some reason this Monday. All right. So we're going to need uh, this guy, this guy. Decide which blocking that we are going to use. I've been doing uh, O-lights all morning this morning. So that is gonna be too thin. So let's move on to one of these. That actually might be perfect. Oh yeah, cause then I could put that up there. Yep, okay, so now this is my light. So if you are using uh, a customer's light, do not, put the blocking directly on it, you will scratch it, so you could take a piece of tape, put it over it. Uh, but these are my light, I bought them, so I don't care if I scratch them up, because in all reality, they are only tools to me. I am only using them to make holsters. So, and then to like, you know, do a review on them or something. But I don't need them otherwise. So just get that there. And this is a half inch socket. And that is to mimic the threaded barrel that comes with the FN 509 Tactical. So it's three. And there's number five. Get this guy. Line it up with that. It's gorgeous out right now. It's like... 65 something like that. I got the dogs in the garage with me. <laughs> Doors are open. Everything is open. It is nice right. Let's get this going So on top of using This piece because we're actually gonna put in another um, small piece of uh, material there We are going to make it Like this right here, so it's gonna dip in and when it dips in, it'll uh, add a little bit more retention as well. So, we could wait on that. Ooh, another yawn. Whew. I was up to like, I don't know, 2 a.m. last night. I was in the garage, I was on the first floor, and I was working on Winston. If you don't know who Winston is, that is my 1954 Buick Special two-door hardtop, and I absolutely love this car. There we go. Flat, and then this piece is just going to sandwich these guys so it doesn't fall on you. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, the FN509 has um, it's ambidextrous all the way around, and it's going to be suppressor height sight. So this particular model doesn't have that, so I have to use these cutoffs to recreate suppressor height sights. down. Cool. And from here, uh, this is going to have a hood on it. So that actually works in our favor because we could take what we're doing here and uh, let's see here. We can use the other block and support everything. So we'll need this. Where the other guys go? I'm just using another build. All right, but anyways, let's get this going. I'll find those later. Well, obviously I need this one and I need the piece for this. I'll find that after. So we're gonna find a good spot for this. Generally, like before, I like to place this at the top of the firearm. I'll go here, and this is uh, our mark cut. So where that's placed is actually pretty good. So we'll lay this here, and you want to make sure it's down far enough to where it does not impede with your cut from the RMR. So you just have to take that in consideration. And a uh, little bit of gap right there, believe it or not, you don't even have to put any support underneath it because majority of it is on something, so that actually will not go anywhere. At least it shouldn't, but because I said it, it's gonna move. But I'm gonna prove that point by not doing anything. All right, and then we're doing RTI 34. Which is this guy, and it's gonna go right there as well. This right here, uh, that will be way too much retention if we don't put a little piece of blocking in there. So we will need to put a little piece of blocking in there. I have a bunch of little pieces already cut and I have a special spot for them, but apparently they don't like to go back there. But luckily I found one. So that will go right there, just like that. We'll go ahead and put a piece of tape there just to hold that in its place. Cool. So now we need to find that other piece that apparently I lost. Hmm. I don't see it, but that's okay. I use that, that'll look good too. All right, so we'll get this in here. No, this is going to go around, so honestly, as long as it's like that, let's do it this way, see if that will fit better. Yeah, that fits perfectly fine, like so, but we're also going to have, um, we need blocking there, which honestly isn't that bad, because what we can do is we could do this right here, then we could take one of these and just put it here, and that'll be actually no issue, so let's do that. So we'll throw that where it needs to be, which is right there. Top of that will get cut. Some tape. Okay. 
And we'll do that one final piece. Let me use this guy because that kind of matches it. So now the only thing left is the retention plate. And I hope I find that other piece of blocking. I really like that piece. Anyways, let's uh, let me just double check this here. Yep, everything is blocked, ready to go. That's oh, gonna look good. And again, it's gonna be an L camo. Should be fine. This is the widest piece I have, so it should work. All right, uh, retention piece. Grab some MDF. And here we are. Line it up with the side channel. Go ahead and get yourself the outline. Five oh nine tech. Oh, they're mini. And let's cut it. And just like that, we got to attach it. Lay down the piece of tape though, just so this stays under. All right, I'm actually going to just lay a piece right here so it'll dip in, but it won't dip in too much. Just like this, that looks good. Take your dad bod, attach it. All right, but seriously, take your widest piece of tape. Go from the grip to the end of the light. Stand it up and then fold it over. Again, the reason why we do this, or the reason why I do this, is because if you don't, the Kydex will find a way to go underneath, and then you'll have to redo it again. And that's not fun, especially when you have, like, you know, if you're doing a print, and you only have one shot, and you mess that up, and it's not fun. That's all set. We're going to take this right here, and we're going to do the multicam. I already got the foam warm. We'll throw this in the oven, take it out at 350, throw it in the press. So I went ahead and I threw in the, um, it's all in the press, everything all set. But I want to show you a couple things. So <laughs> my sublimation stuff, I got the printer, got the tape I needed, got all the inks. Those are all set and the paper just came in. So uh, I'm going to find a spot on my bench 
I'll get it going and uh, I'm going to try something. So I have some light colored Kydex. I'll try like a camo or my logo or something like that. So I'm going to try that, see how it goes. Cause then I'm going to definitely offer custom prints and whatnot. And uh, yeah, my hair's a mess. Anyways, so I got some more stuff into, I got more, more colors for this. I got bright yellow. We got a Cadillac blue and a transparent blue, translucent blue. And I got to tell you, these they're nice colors. So I'll show you what they look like. Here it is. And uh, yeah, so last night, I made, I mean, I made holsters literally all day last night, well, all day yesterday. And then last night at around like nine o'clock, I was like, you know what? I'm done. So what I did is I came down here to my Leia, right? Let me show you this. So, you know, Winston, and I've been kind of showing you all this stuff too. And it's tight down here when all the cars are in here. Throw the light on. I actually went and I don't, I've never welded. I'm not like, this is legit. I'm going to show you. This is my second welding right here. Look at that. You know what? For my second time, I will take it. So that's what it looked like after I was done. And uh, yeah, there's a little bit of grinding going on there, but that four and a half drop is looking pretty good. So let's actually get the whole car. I think that is going to be one bitchin' ride when that's done. So that's how big it is. So you can see actually right here, I ended up taking a piece of steel bar and I welded it to the windshield frame. That way I could get my height and then I just have a jack on this side. So I could get that same height, but I'm gonna weld in something. I'll tack it. But this is what uh, this is what Winston looks like. I love it. So I can't wait to uh, work on it some more. Honestly, I think after I finish this holster, I might come down here and and work on it. You know, just chip away at it. Shut this light off. Because this stuff, it's really nice to wind down and and do all this. Cause you gotta do something. If you do too much Kydex, it just gets to you sometimes. You get a headache and everything goes wrong and whatnot. You know, I was, I was telling myself yesterday too, the Buick and my hair, I haven't cut it since I quit my job in September. And this is the longest I have ever had it. I, I hate long hair. I hate long beards. I don't like it. So I was like, you know what? When I get this car driving, as in Winston, the Buick. If I get it driving, I will cut my hair. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe not. Because <laughs> that'll definitely... That's going to take some time. But we'll see. Anyways, back to the holster. Fresh out of the press. I like it. Looks good. Looks really good. And uh, now we're going to cut it up. So, first is first. Pull all this off. Cool. All right. So let's get this going. Uh, as far as retention, uh, we know the retention point is right here and right here. So what I like to do is I like to have that centered uh, uh, where the retention points are going to be. So we'll put one right around here. We'll come up and we'll put another one here. That way both of that's clamping over this, if that makes any sense. So it'll be right there. And then we'll come up. We know this has a threaded barrel Put it down and we're not gonna like go like over anything like that we're just gonna cut it uh, let's see here get around it like so 
take this guy, line her back up, find where the trigger is. We'll go straight down with it. And then we're going to come straight up. Stop right about here. I generally stop around um, the rear sight. So we will now do our RMR cut, which is going to go all the way up. And this is why I say move this piece as far down as you can, because you don't want that coming up on the RMR. And this, the slide changes where the RMR hits. So we're going to go just like, just like so. And now we're going to go ahead and we'll drill out the two retention points. quick. Oof, there we go. This multicam's looking good. All right, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, just zing this out real quick on the, uh, the bandsaw and then move to the scroll saw. came from but I'm gonna go fix that real quick and it's fixed a little bit of more action with the uh, the Dremel there so uh, we're gonna go move on to these guys and then finish with that one and this will be all set to Mundo I'm actually looking forward to the way this is gonna look we are gonna use um, clear to make that bracket that I've been doing generally I'll make it with the same color but my 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 lord it is so much easier with the clear, because there's no guessing. You don't have to trace anything. It's just bam, right there. So let's get ready to rumble. Um, we need a drill bit. There we go. Make 
actually. <laughs> I don't have to trace this one. I forgot my blocking has the hole in it already. Or the dimples, rather. Oh, no. Oh. Trace. All right. Do that. Now we have to change it to the smaller guy. This bit is uh, 5 30 seconds. The only reason why I use this bit is because it fits in the hole without spitting on it. Just mark the hole. Get back your 7 30 seconds. And drill those. So that's done and now what we're gonna do is pretty much change our bit again to the smaller guy that fits in this these were uh, specifically asked to use these so these are the ones that I am using for this gentleman just clamp it on there so it doesn't move go ahead and start your And you see those three are started. Okay. Change this back. Move it to this one. And then I'll open up the hole with the 730 seconds. Go ahead. Clean. Grab a Sharpie marker. Lay it over it. And then just mark the center. And I drill that out with the quarter inch one for rivets. That's how it looks. Looks like I'm just gonna have to oversize that one a little bit. All right, and then what we'll do is I'll just go ahead and I'll just cut out a little piece and it'll look like this. Peekaboo! There it is right there. So now let's go ahead and collect the hardware that's needed. This is the bag from the RTI, and this is the bag from the hood. All right, so bam, bam, bam. We're gonna have to use longer ones for the hood, no big deal. Let's get this hooked up. Grab the other stuff. All right, got these all set. These are for the RTI plate. Get the Loctite on there. Just realized I spilled some Loctite on one of my tools. I hate when that happens. All right. And speaking of, that tool was my Noga RC2000, I think it is, to deburr the inside without using a razor blade and scuffing up edges that you accidentally hit. I hated doing that for so long. Accidents happen, and accidents get expensive. And accidents turn into minivans. There we go. Wipe down. Okay. So let's get uh, 
the hood hardware in. Now you gotta remember in this hood, the pivot one is this one that stands alone, this guy. So you cannot, absolutely cannot tighten that all the way. Did I just lose? Okay, that's the only thing that's crappy about clear. <laughs> you lose it easily. Okay. One. Oh, that one doesn't want to go in, so let's move on to the next one real quick. There we go. It's either going to be the bolt or nut. And I just got it to go in, so apparently it was my angle. Come on. At what point do you throw both of them out? There we go, got it. Cool. Alright, so before I tighten those, I'll go ahead and throw these in. These are half inch slotted posts with 0.4375 bushings. And the Kydex is 0.08 thick as well. All right, so now that all those are in, keep that in the position you want it. Go ahead and tighten the bottom ones only. There you go. The top one, take your screwdriver and just get it, just get it snug. And then test it. Okay, that's nice. All right, so we'll move these aside. Might as well throw some over here. Okay, get our RTI plate. Ah, let's do it again. There it is. All right. Bottom one, I always do a little bit tighter. You want to even that one up. At this point, grab your RTI wheel and make sure you have plenty of clearance, which we do. That's like right there on the spot. And you notice how it has a slight angle out that angle is for uh, if you're wearing a vest so this will be up bam and it's coming off so i like that let's get uh gun in here close that up let me grab some uh retention hardware just throw that in real quick Check our retention. That's nice. Personally, I like to go a hair tighter. Oh, that's nice. I'm gonna go actually tighter though. Jason, you <laughs> you are gonna like this. Cause tell you what, my girlfriend just bought a 509 tactical, and I don't know if you're gonna get this holster. Just saying. <laughs> Actually, I lied. She bought a compact. Anyways, so let's get this on here. You want this even uh, with the pivot point. Otherwise, it just won't work that well. Which is right here. 
also that is definitely high enough to clear any RMR that's on there. So go ahead and pull that, drill your hole. Clean. Clean. And this particular setup, there's no washer. It's just nut, then the hood. And what happens is you're using this right here, but if you notice the nut, uh, the bolt is tapered. And what it does is it actually bottoms out against the um, the slotted post before it even contacts the plastic hood. So if you notice, it's spinning and the hood still has play. So that's tied up as, long, as far as it can go. And there we go. So we'll take this, lock that in, bam. And this is the, oh, that's pretty. I like that. RTI with these new, new hoods. These are, they're, they're, they're not bad. I, I'm having mixed feelings with them. I've had some that work great. I had to modify one earlier because the, uh, it was, wasn't working well. Uh, it wouldn't, it wouldn't lock back. So I had to shave off some material. So it actually locked back. Uh, but this actually, this is working good. This looks good. Jason, I hope you enjoy it because I want it. Have fun guys.